Descriptive statistics enable you to summarize, organize, and simplify large data sets to derive meaningful patterns and insights. And for a long time, there's only really been one tool to get descriptive statistics in Excel. But in this video, I'm going to cover three ways. They all have their pros and cons. The first uses the analysis tool pack to automatically generate a table of descriptive statistics from your data set. By default, the analysis tool pack add-in is inactive. To activate it, go to the file tab, select options, go to the add-ins tab, and down at the bottom, press go to manage Excel add-ins. Check analysis tool pack in the add-ins window and press okay. Now when you open the data tab, it will show over on the far right in the analysis group, data analysis. The data I'm going to use in this example is some fictitious monthly units of coffee sales for five cities over a 12 month period. To insert descriptive statistics, I select data analysis, and then from the list, select descriptive statistics and click OK. In the dialog box for the input range, select the cells containing your numeric data, including the heading. My data is in a column, so I'll leave grouped by as is, but it can also work with data in a row. I included the column label when I selected my data, so I'll keep labels in first row checked. The output range is the cell I want the descriptive statistics placed into, which I'll put in the current sheet. You can also choose to put them on a new sheet or a new workbook. And then select everything you want in the table from summary statistics, confidence level for mean, eighth largest and smallest. For example, here you could say you want the second largest or second smallest. For my simplistic data, I'll just go with the summary table and click OK. And you can see the tables returned. So in just a few clicks, I've generated a load of statistics for my data set. Pretty easy. However, as I select the numeric cells, you can see in the formula bar, they're all hard keyed, which means if your data set changes, you have to run the descriptive statistics again. They also don't come with any formatting, so you'll need to do that manually. Now, while this summary table gives you a bird's eye view of the entire data set, it's still limited if we want to categorize the data. One option is to use the analysis tool pack to create a frequency table of the data grouped into bins and displayed in a histogram. To support this, we have to build a summary table with the upper limits, which I've already done here. For completeness, I've added the lower limit and concatenated them together with a formula into intervals, which I'll use later. To create the frequency table and histogram, go to the data tab, data analysis, and choose histogram. The input range are the cells containing the values, including the header. And the bin range is the upper bin limits, including the header. The output range is where you'd like the frequency table placed. And I'll check the chart output as well. But notice here you can also select Pareto chart and display the cumulative percentage. I'll leave mine as is and click OK. And Excel inserts a histogram chart. This is actually a regular column chart, as opposed to the newer histogram chart that came out with Excel 2016 that we can see here. And because it's a regular chart, I can double click the columns to open the formatting pane. And in series options, I can set the gap width to zero. Under fill and line, I'll also set a solid line border on the columns, just for clarity. I'll also remove the chart title and legend and leave it at that, but you can do more formatting as required. One thing you might like to do is replace the upper bin values in the frequency table with the interval labels. And I'll replace more with 53,001 plus. In this case, I could also omit this data point since it doesn't have any values. Now these changes you can see feed through to the chart. Let's make the chart wider to accommodate them. While the descriptive statistics and histograms are super easy to create, they don't update if the data source changes and you can't link them to slices to create dynamic results. Another way we can create descriptive statistics is using pivot tables, which also gives us more flexibility and we can team them with slices to make them interactive. Let's take a look. Using the same data, I'll insert a pivot table on a new sheet. I'll put the sales field in the values area seven times. There we go. And change them to go down the rows. And I'll leave the first one as sum. 
and then right click and choose summarize values by count and then rinse and repeat for average and max and min. And for the less commonly used aggregation types, you need to right click and then field settings and choose from the list. I'll choose standard deviation. Now I could choose standard deviation of population here, especially since my data set is complete. But if you check the data analysis tool pack results, you'll see it assumes the data is a sample. So just to show consistent results with that, I'll go with the first standard deviation type. And lastly, variance. Again, here I can choose variance of a population, but I'll use bar to be consistent. And let's quickly remove the numbers after each row label to tidy them up. Now the nice thing about using pivot tables is I can insert a slicer for the city. Let's move it over closer to the pivot table. Now I can filter the data and have a dynamic list of the statistics for my data. I'll clear the filters and I can also add the month field and then I have statistics by month. I can also build histograms of pivot tables. So I'll insert a new pivot table on a new sheet. I'll put the sales in both the row labels and the values field and then right click and group the sales into bins starting at 41,000 and ending at 52,000 by groups of 2,000. Click OK. So I'll right click and change the aggregation to count and show values as percentage of grand total. I can visualize this in a histogram, but the newer histogram chart types don't work with pivot tables. So let's insert a column chart instead. Right click and hide all the fill buttons, they just get in the way. And get rid of the chart title and the legend because there's only one series, so the legend is redundant. I'll double click the columns to open the formatting pane. Here I'll change the cap width to zero. And on the fill and line tab, I'll give it a border. Let's just bring back the field list so I can insert a slicer to filter the data. So as I select cities in the slicer, the pivot table and histogram now automatically update. And if my data updates, I can simply right click the pivot table and refresh and they update. So you can see the pivot table offers a nicer experience and they're easy to update, but statistics you can calculate with them are limited. Whereas if you're a Microsoft 365 user, you can use the powerful Python libraries like Pandas and SciPy to calculate statistics from inside Excel. They're currently in preview on the beta channel for Office Insiders. Let's take a look. Using the new Python functions in Excel, I can create a data frame for my coffee data. I'll use the keyboard shortcut Control Alt Shift P to go into Python mode. I'll name the data frame DF. And I can reference the coffee sales data on the data tab. Excel puts in the new Excel function for me. I need to specify that my table has headers. And then enter the formula with Control Enter. Now if I click on the object icon, we get a preview of the data. Another way you can go into Python mode is with the new PY function. Simply type equals PY and then tab. And I can reference the data frame that I named DF dot and then describe open and close parentheses and this is going to return the descriptive statistics using the pandas library that's automatically loaded to excel let's control enter to complete the formula now it's returned an object so let's change it to a value and it spills the results the pandas descriptive statistics are fairly basic but with scipy we have more options so taking a look at the examples in the file that you can download from the link in the video description here you can see the results of the SciPy stats. I'll control shift U to expand the formula bar and you can see in the code that I've specified the stats to return. I've also created other data frames of the data pivoted by city and by month. This has enabled me to return descriptive statistics at different levels of granularity. For example, here I have pandas descriptive statistics by month and here by city. This is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to Python in Excel and I go into a lot more detail in this video, including how to create these amazing charts. So check that out next.
Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.